All right. Noticed uh, Zenith did a little show and tell on uh, the M12 Milwaukee rivet gun. Um, I've been using mine for a year and a half now. Um, so I figured I'd do a little little show and tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, some of the stuff is kind of weird and chintzy, so it's got a little rivet catcher that goes on the back, but the stems can kind of fall out the holes here. Um, good news is that if you buy the pneumatic rivet gun from Zenith, which I did, um, the tips from that work in here. Uh, they screw right in. The handheld rivet gun uses, it's a smaller size tip, um, so those don't fit, um, which is, so it's kind of weird. There's an onboard tool for changing the tips, but it does not work with the uh, Zenith tips that were for the pneumatic gun. Um, so it's just kind of a weird thing. Um, you can get it with one battery or two. You got over 300 rivets pulled with one battery, just these small little guys. Um, so I don't need to go hog wild and get the big beefy battery or anything that goes on the bottom. Um, you can hold hold your bits here. So I just keep the uh, A4 and the A5 rivet with it. You can kind of see there the, the smaller size that the, the stock standard rivets are. Um, I think that one's for an A6. I just keep on here versus how much bigger that hex is for the, the, the Zenith pneumatic gun rivets. But I just use the, the crescent wrench to change them out. So not the end of the world that the uh, onboard tool doesn't work. A little light in here is kind of pesky because obviously everything's shiny aluminum. So. Usually the light ends up reflecting and hitting you back in the eye, but it is what it is. Um, most of the rivet stems, just like your regular pneumatic riveter, will fall out. So if you're riveting like this, the stems just fall out and a little plastic catcher doesn't do much. Um, if you're going upside down, obviously, you catch them good and horizontally, uh, it's just easier to dump them out. Um, so it doesn't do a whole lot of good. There is you some battery status indicator lights here. So at least let you know how the battery's doing. Um, other than that, yeah, it's it's kind of heavy and dense, and it doesn't doesn't sit upright like this. Usually, if you got to sit on the table, you either lay it sideways or it's uh, actually meant to sit upside down. There's a, a flat up here. This was kind of a little through, but it's pretty it was pretty tipsy though. Most of the weight's up here, but then you got the battery and this little clip and some other heavy stuff down at the bottom. So it's it kind of stays upright. Uh, but goes quick, not quite as fast as a pneumatic riveter, but you don't have the the ear pain of running the, the air compressor and having to drag around the, the airline everywhere with you. Um, it's, for me, I haven't, since I got this, I haven't used the pneumatic compressor, or the pneumatic gun with the compressor. It's just, I no need to. Um, so I'll use this everywhere I can, and then if I can't, still get those tight spots. Uh, I've got my hand squeezer, um, it's filed down, I'm sure everyone's looks the same just to get into some of the the tight corners where the ribs are. Um, so, let me show you a quick, quick video of what I can pull. Okay, the more I think about it, this is actually a pretty good, uh, good way to show what it can and can't do. Hold my bracket on the back side, I'll show you how close I can get to what you're pulling and where its limitations are at. Starting to get a little, a little tight in there now. You can see I'm not, not perfectly square anymore. That's probably as close as I can get. I'll have to finish up the last two with the, the hand squeezer. But all in all, I think it's a pretty darn good tool and 
highly recommend it. I think it's about 180 bucks or so. Um, I think it gives you the kit, so you get a battery or two. And, um, I end up using Milwaukee uh, drill gun to drill all, most of my holes out. Uh, the M12, so the batteries swap out there. Extra batteries and plenty of chargers and everything like that. So usually finding a charge battery is never an issue, which is the only complaint that most guys have with the uh, cordless stuff versus running an air gun. But I mean, if you got airlines all over the place, and you already got already got the pneumatic gun, and you don't mind dragging a hose around. Um, I guess stick with what you got. But if you're just getting started or get frustrated with running an air compressor and it's always on or off and you can't can't hear yourself think in the hangar, I'd go go this route.